Hi, my name is Alec, and I'm going to be presenting on UniLink. So hi, I'm Alec. I've been an intern at Wolfram for three years, and today I'm going to be talking about UniLink. We'll start with a quick overview of what we're going to talk about. First, we're going to go into the motivations of UniLink. Uh, then we're going to discuss what's new about it this year um, from last conference. Then we're going to jump into some uh, examples of physics simulations, lighting and rendering, some navigation with the Uni Nav Mesh, and uh, building Uni projects from the Wolfram language. All right, so motivation. So what does Unity, Unity provide to the Wolfram language users? It provides a powerful physics engine called PhysX. It also provides really nice lighting and rendering. Uh, this includes stuff like shadows and reflections. And it also provides other built-in utilities, such as pathfinding and uh, terrain generation. And from the Unity side, Wolfram language provides a nice scripting environment, as well as some algorithmic content creation, such as meshes, textures, and audio. They can very easily import from Mathematica into Unity. And lastly, it provides uh, tracking analytics. Uh, for tracking uh, scene uh, object data, and so on. All right, so what's new this year? Uh, so we've added a lot of uh, scene functions, such as creating, opening, finding, merging, and saving, and closing scenes. Uh, so you control all that now from the Wolfram language. Uh, also, we've added functions for uh, controlling the editor mode from the Wolfram language, so things like playing, pausing, stopping, and stepping frame by frame through a uh, Unity simulation. We've also added functions for capturing uh, a screen from a certain Unity camera as well as building directly from the Wolfram language. We also add support for materials, textures, particle systems, um, and made our existing uh, functions more flexible. All right. So let's jump in. So first we have some physics simulations. We're going to start with a wrecking ball scene. So we will go ahead and load the Unity link. Then we're going to load a new Unity project called physics simulations. So just take a second. All right, there it goes. I have our new project here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and create some asset directories. As we see, added all these directories down here. Then we want to go ahead and create some textures and materials uh, and put those in the asset directory. Uh, so first, we can create the scene and using this create new scene function. And we're going to want to save that scene by saying uh, scenes wrecking ball. So that's going to put it in the scenes folder. And wrapping a file around it will mean that it'll actually save it to the assets folder. So now you can see that if we go to our scenes folder, it now contains our wrecking ball scene. Uh, then we can go ahead and add some textures. So here we just create uh, textures, tell it where to put it in our assets folder, and give it an image. And it will uh, directly convert it to a DXT uh, format and store it in our textures folder, which you can see down here. Uh, next, we're going to use those textures to create some materials by just uh, using create new material, tell it where we want the material to go, and then uh, giving it the texture. And here we also change the texture scale so that um, it fits the plane better. So we go down here, we can see the materials now has these three materials. All right, next. So now we want to create some geometry for our scene. So first, let's make a platform. Uh, let's see it here. And we add the texture, um, our caution material, to the share material of that platform. And we can set it directly like this using the part uh, specification. Another way we can set a shared material is um, in the actual create function, where we want to specify the option properties. Then we can say share material and give it the uh, material we want. So here we'll create a box and give it our box material. You can see there, it's a little small. Um, now we're going to go ahead and add a rigid body to that box, so it'll be affected by physics. And then we're going to create a prefab from that box. So now you can see if we go to our prefabs folder, that prefab was added to um, the assets directory. And now we can go ahead and delete that original box because we do not need it anymore. All right, and now we want to build a wall out of boxes. So we go ahead and make a bunch of positions um, that are in a row here and go ahead and see what those positions are. So it just creates a grid of cubes. Um, so go ahead and create a empty game object uh, called wall to serve as a parent for our wall. And then we can go ahead and create uh, multiple game objects from that box prefab um, at the different positions uh, with their parent being the wall. So this will um, add a lot of boxes as a ch children to the uh, wall object here. So just take a second. And there we go. So now we have our wall of boxes. Uh, next, we want to add a wrecking ball. So we go ahead and just add a unity sphere called wrecking ball and set its position. Uh, then we want to add uh, a hinge joint. This is a physics component that will create a hinge that allows the ball to uh, swing back and forth. And we're going to set its anchor to be above the wall, so that way it will swing directly into the wall. So we can do that. 
Um, next, we're going to get the component on the ball that's the rigid body and set its mass to be 100 instead of 1. This will make it a lot more um, heavy and make it a lot more powerful when it hits that wall. Uh, as you can see over here, we have the ball up there, and its uh, axis is centered above the wall. Uh, next, we're going to make a pull, so it's a little easier to see. This is all aesthetic, um, so we see that it made a pull from the ball to its hinge center. And lastly, we're going to set the material of our ball and pull to make it look a little better. Now we see it's a metallic material. All right, now we have our scene set up. We're going to go ahead and be able to run it using the scene play function. So we go back over here. In a second, it'll run the simulation. And there we go. So we see it goes through and hits all the boxes. And then it swings back. All right, that was fun, but we can go ahead and add some more boxes to make it a little more interesting. Uh, so first, let's reposition our camera by finding it and then setting its position and uh, oil angles uh, so that we have a nice side view of our scene. Uh, then we're going to find that wall. We're going to copy it multiple times to get uh, a nice box shape. Then we're going to delete our original wall. And now we can go ahead and play it, but have it so that it initializes in the pause state. So right now it's in the simulation mode, but it's pause. So we can go ahead and use this Unity Step function to step 100 frames forward and then stop again. Go ahead and do that. We'll see it runs and then it stops. And then we can use our Unity Screen Capture function to get the image of the camera. You can see it's just now hitting the boxes. And then we can go ahead and unpause it and see that it continues. And then we can go ahead and stop the simulation. All right, that's it for the Wrecking Ball. Uh, next, we're going to uh, work with Kloss. Let's go ahead and save that scene. And let's close Unity and reopen it with the physics simulation. So just take a second here. All right, so now we're going to create a new scene called Cloth. And we're going to go ahead and create some materials for our cloth scene. This would be a red material and a gray material. All right, then we're going to create three rods or cylinders that the cloth will fall onto. You can see they're centered here in the center of the scene. Uh, we can go ahead and make their collider radius a little bit bigger so it collides better with the cloth. We go ahead and change our camera position to have a better view of the scene. So now we see our three rods here. Um, so next we're gonna actually add the cloth. So first we'll make a disc mesh and discretize it so it has a lot of triangles. We need a lot of points in order to make the cloth uh, move realistically. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and create a Unity Mesh asset from that mesh. So you can see in our Mesh folder, we now have this nice uh, this Mesh asset. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and reposition that uh, Mesh. We're going to create a game object out of it. And lastly, we're going to set this material to be that red material. So now if we go back over here, we see our cloth there. Go ahead and add a cloth component. This is a physics component that will make the vertices act like a cloth. I'm going to go ahead and on that clock component, uh, set the capsule colliders that it will collide with to the capsule colliders of our rods. And lastly, you can just save the scene. If you look over here, we see our uh, the cloth with the three rods. So then we can go ahead and run the scene. Hit play. Take a second to start here. I should see the cloth fall onto the rods. We go back and forth. And there we go. All right, and that's the cloth simulation. Uh, next up, we're going to go into some of the rendering and lighting. Uh, so we go ahead and close the Unity project and open a new one called rendering. See it opened here. All right, let's create a new scene called render. All right, now we're going to start by making a nice uh, room, which is just a bunch of planes uh, on each side for a wall. So we go ahead and get those positions and rotations of those planes. And let's go through and create a plane with the proper position and rotation here. So if we do that, come back over here. You see we now have a nice box of planes to contain our scene. Uh, next, we're going to actually add some objects to our scene to make it more interesting. Uh, so first, let's reposition our camera so that's now inside the uh, uh, room there. We're going to go ahead and create a teapot from our teapot mesh. Uh, we're going to do the same for the guitar, a spiky, and a sphere and a cube. Now if we go back over here, we'll see all of our objects in the scene uh, nicely laid out. 
Um, it's a little hard to see what they are. So we can go ahead and change the materials on those. So I'm going to go through, create a new material for planes, uh, set the chair material on all planes to that material. And we're going to find the uh, floor material or floor plane and set this material to be a slightly lighter color. So I see it's changed there. And now we're going to actually add materials to all the different objects, which now we colored them. Uh, notice the sphere in the center has some reflection on it. Uh, that's because we are able to set uh, material properties now, such as glossiness and metallic um, to full, so that way it acts like a mirror. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and add a reflection probe to that sphere. Um, so that way, this reflection probe will bake in reflections of the environment and then allow us to uh, see those reflections on the sphere. All right, and we're going to set everything to static. And doing this, we'll kick off the uh, Unity uh, lighting baking process. So we go here, we see it started preparing to bake. Um, this will take about a minute and 30 seconds. Um, however, so we don't have to wait. I've actually done this already in a different scene. Uh, so we'll go ahead and open that scene. And up here, it's not been saved. It's all right. Um, go ahead. Uh, let me just make those in real quick. Let's go back to our render scene. Make our planes. Move the camera. Create our objects. Create sphere, create cubes, and create all of our materials. Add a reflection probe and set it to static. All right. Uh, so it'll take about a minute and 30 seconds to render. Uh, so we can go ahead and uh, add some cameras. So we're going to get some more perspectives on the scene. So we can add a camera that faces the back and a camera that's from the top down. We're going to get our uh, reference to the front camera. I can see we have the different cameras here in our scene. The back and top are here. Um, so we can go ahead and use our Unity screen capture and give it different cameras to get the view of those cameras. This will be the camera front. This will be the camera from the front. And we can also set a custom image resolution. And this resolution can be um, higher than the actual uh, scene we see here in the Unity Editor. Um, and lastly, we can uh, get the um, view of multiple cameras at once. We can get all three cameras here and see what they see. Let's see. This is taking about 50 more seconds to render. Um, go ahead and move past this and come back if we have time afterwards. All right, so we're going to go ahead and save that scene, then close Unity. Uh, we're going to open up a new example called Navigation. So here we're going to go over the uh, Unity Nav Mesh agents and uh, obstacles to see how we can do pathfinding with the built-in Unity uh, functions. So here it should be opening a new Unity project called Navigation. All right, there we go. Uh, let's create a new scene called Maze. Go ahead and create a bunch of materials for our maze. All right, you can see all the materials added. Uh, Next, we're going to add a platform and set its material to be the platform material and make it static. And we see it's added there. Uh, next, we're going to move the camera to get a better viewpoint on our scene. Then we're going to create a player, which is just a capsule, set its material, and then add a camera to that player. I see a little red player there. And then lastly, we're going to add a lot of geometry to the scene. Um, Let's go ahead and do all that here real quick. So we add all of our walls, ramps, a little door in the middle, and some meshes as obstacles. You can see those load in here. So we get our blue wall with ramps leading up to the top of the wall and our, all of our obstacles. So now we want to actually add some nav mesh uh, functionality to it. So we can go ahead and create a nav mesh agent on the player. We can add an obstacle to the door and set it to carve nav mesh and when it's uh, moving as well. And it's nice for all of our uh, orange obstacles that we have here. We just add an obstacle uh, to them. You can see them there. And lastly, we're just going to use Unity execute here to call the uh, static build nav mesh function to build our nav mesh. So we run that here. Now, if we go over here to the scene view, uh, we should be able to see the nav mesh show up soon to finish baking. Uh, 
taking a second here. Did that run? Sorry, it's taking a little bit to bake. Uh. Oh, it's going to save the scene. All right, there we go. The scenes need to be saved to uh, create the nav mesh. Right now we see in light blue here, we have the uh, nav mesh uh, covering our entire scene, showing where the agent can go. Uh, now we can actually have some functionality with it. So we can go ahead and create this function. They'll create a nice um, control in the Wolfram language notebook here. So we can control our scene. Uh, so we'll go ahead and run a simulation. and maximize it. So we see we have our player of our objects. Uh, so if we run this create controls, it'll create a dynamic here that will show an overview of the scene and give us some uh, controls to move the player and change the camera position. All right, so our player is here. We can click anywhere on the scene. It will create a new destination and use the Pathfinder to go find it. And we see the player actually goes to that location. Uh, we can click somewhere else. And we can also close this door in the center. So now we can close that door and see it shuts there. And then the player has to go around and find a new path. Uh, we can go ahead and open that. Um, we can also switch views. So I'll click over here, send the player here, and then I'll switch the view to have it be the player's first person's perspective. So now I see it going down. And I can also stop and start the agent, to make it stop where it is, and then continue. All right, then go ahead and stop the simulation. And then close the dynamic. All right, and lastly here, we're gonna talk about uh, building from the Wolfram language. So we'll go ahead and close that project and reopen our physics simulation project with a wrecking ball. We'll just take a second here. All right. It's open again. Just make sure we can do the open Unity scene, give it the wrecking ball. Uh, now we can just call Unity build here, and it will build the uh, project to um, the actual project directory. So we'll just take a second, and now we see the uh, location of our build project. We'll go ahead and open that. Should get a prompt about the resolution that we want to run at. It's taking a second here. Seems to be having trouble opening it. Let's do it manually. All right. So we can see this is uh, the application I built in our project directory. And then we can go ahead and run that. We should see our wrecking ball. Yep. And this is a standalone application that doesn't need any uh, Unity or Wolfram language support on it. And this function has uh, different options. You can set uh, the build targets um, to be like the platform. So it can be OS X, um, OpenGL, and uh, Windows, so on. Uh, you can also set the build name and a build directory, as well as setting a custom icon for it. All right. And that covers the presentation. Any questions?